Welcome back to Learn Electrics. In today's video, we will look at the basic operation of an RCD and what makes it work. RCDs are now a common component in most consumer units and are available in a range of sizes for tripping currents and for working currents. In this video, we will concentrate only on the 30 milliamp RCD that is used to give additional protection in domestic and similar installations. When we talk about a 30 milliamp RCD, we are referring to the tripping current of the device. If the RCD detects a difference in the circuit of 30 milliamps or more, then it will trip and disconnect itself from the electrical supply. A 30 milliamp RCD is intended to give additional protection to users of the installation as they can operate at much lower fault currents than the standard circuit breakers. This is because an RCD is not monitoring the amount of current, but instead it is looking for very small current differences. If the RCD operates on a current difference or residual current of 30 milliamps, just 30 thousandths of an amp, then a normally healthy adult is unlikely to receive a fatal electric shock. So what is a residual current? It is the leftover or missing current. Electrical theory says that what flows into a circuit must flow out and we can show this graphically here with two buckets and a piece of pipe. If 5 litres of water enters the pipe from the top bucket then we would expect 5 litres to enter the lower bucket. We can do a little calculation. 5 litres in minus 5 litres out gives a result of zero. There is no water missing. Now Suppose that our piece of pipe starts to corrode and a small rust hole develops. Water starts to leak out. Not a lot to begin with, just a few drips, but over time it gets worse. What happens to our water now? We put 5 litres in, but only 4 litres comes out into the lower bucket. There is 1 litre of water missing. This 1 litre is the residual amount, the difference between what went in and what came out. It is exactly the same with an electrical circuit. If there is 5 amps going in along the phase wire, but only 4 amps returning along the neutral wire, where is the missing 1 amp? This is known as the residual current. It must be going to earth somewhere, and we just need to hope that it's not going through our customer and giving them an electric shock. Shown here is a simple drawing of the inside of an RCD. We have a central core of ferromagnetic material and the incoming line or phase wire shown here in brown wraps around the core. The outgoing neutral wire in blue wraps around the same core as it leaves the circuit. The currents in the line and neutral will both cause a magnetic disturbance in the core which is detected by the sensing coil. If they are both equal what goes in comes out then they will cancel each other out and the sensing coil will register zero difference. However, if there is a leakage of current, however small, there will be more current in the phase wire than in the neutral wire and the sensing coil will detect this. If the residual current, the missing current, reaches a certain set limit, there will be enough difference in the sensing coil to cause the trigger mechanism to operate, to open the contacts and disconnect the supply. For a domestic installation, this limit will be set at 30 milliamps, 30 thousandths of an amp. There will often be small leakage currents in the electrical circuits and 50 milliamps is considered the limit of survivability for electric shocks. So, if we set the RCD limit to 30 milliamps, then most healthy people should be protected. A simple way to look at it is to imagine a seesaw. If what goes in comes out, then the seesaw is balanced. A slight imbalance, a small leakage in the circuit, and perhaps 10 milliamps of leakage current is detected. This amount of leakage can be tolerated, so the RCD does nothing. It's OK. The problem gets a little worse. Now there is 20 milliamps of leakage current, but still the RCD does nothing. Everything is within set limits. A few weeks later, 
and the leakage current is now 30 milliamps. This is the set limit for the RCD. The sensing coil detects this, causing the RCD to operate. In just a few milliseconds, the trigger mechanism will open the line and the neutral contacts and disconnect the supply. Let us now look at this with our RCD coil drawing. Here is the RCD connected in the socket circuit. We have only shown one socket and one circuit for simplicity. But in practice, we will have several circuits attached to one RCD. And we've also left off any circuit breakers or fuses that might be part of this circuit. We have the live in, the neutral out, and also the circuit protective conductor or earth coming out. What happens when we plug in our kettle? 13 amps flows along the incoming line through the coil that is wrapped around the ferromagnetic core and into the kettle. This is a nice shiny new kettle and there is no leakage. So 13 amps flows back along the neutral wire, around the core and out of the circuit. The sensing coil detects no difference and does nothing. A year or two later, the kettle is still in use but has a small amount of leakage current. This leakage, 10 milliamps say, flows along the earth wire. Look at what is flowing out of the circuit. 13 amps on the neutral and 10 milliamps or 0 0.010 amps on the earth. Add these together and this must be what is going in on the phase wire. 13.010 amps. It is a 30 milliamp RCD so nothing happens. Much later, our kettle problem becomes much worse. We turn it on one morning and 50 milliamps of leakage current flows along the earth. 13 amps on the neutral and 0 0.050 amps on the earth means that 13.050 amps flows into the circuit. This difference of 50 milliamps is above the threshold for the sensing coil and the trigger will operate when the mechanism activates, both the phase and neutral switch contacts are opened. This will disconnect the supply to the circuit and no current will flow. The voltage to the circuit is broken at the switch and no voltage is present in the circuit. We now have a dead circuit. We should investigate the problem, carry out any remedial actions, in this case replace the kettle and restore the supply. For an RCD, it does not matter what amount of current is being used, it could just as easily have been a 1 kilowatt kettle at 3 amps. As soon as there is a difference of 30 milliamps or more, the RCD will activate. Every RCD type device will have a test button on the front, either marked test or just T. The householder should be encouraged to press this test button every 6 months to ensure that the RCD is operating correctly mechanically. The RCD can be reset by lifting the on-off switch into the up position. It will of course mean the resetting of clocks and timers on that circuit, but this is a small price to pay for the knowledge that the RCD is continuing to protect the householder and their family. A good time to test the RCDs in the property is when the clocks are adjusted twice a year for summertime and wintertime hours. The clocks will need to be reset anyway, so why not test the RCDs just before adjusting the clocks? When the test button is pressed, a resistor is introduced into the circuit. This resistor is connected between the load side of the phase and the supply side of the neutral. There is now an imbalance between phase and neutral and the resistor value has been selected to give a difference of 30 milliamps, enough to cause the RCD to operate. What then is the working current of an RCD? On the front we will find some numbers, in this case 80 amps, 30 milliamps. The 80 amps is the working current. It is the current that can safely pass through the RCD 7 days a week, 24 hours a day. If this value is exceeded, and the phase and neutral are still the same value, the RCD will not trip. An RCD does not offer any overload protection 
and must be installed with a breaker or a fuse. Working current is not the same as tripping current. Additional protection by an RCD is now a requirement for all new domestic final circuits. This is in addition to the protection offered by MCBs as an RCD will operate much faster and at lower fault currents than a circuit breaker. For fault currents in a TT system, it is unlikely that an MCB will operate in the required time because of the usual high ZS values. And so, an RCD is installed to give the necessary fault protection. Remember though, that it will not give any overload protection. An RCD should not be installed on its own. There should always be a circuit breaker or fuse giving the necessary overload protection to the circuit. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next twice weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. And we also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.